This is Scarlet Deer Inn, a captivating game currently under development by Czech-based indie studio Atu Games. At first glance, this video game may look cool and have an interesting story, but there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. This is Stylized Station, after all. The amazing part of this game is the new way the characters are brought to life through animation. The game features a protagonist named Elise, who, along with other character frames, is made entirely of embroidered thread. But you might wonder, how does this unique animation technique work? To truly appreciate the ingenuity behind Scarlet Deer Inn's character design and animation, we must first delve into the world of weird and wonderful vintage animation that paved the way for such creative approaches. Because trust me when I say this, video game animation was weird. It wasn't just the blocky graphics or the limited color palettes that made these games feel so different from what we have today, it was also the inventive and often bizarre animation techniques developers employed to bring their digital worlds to life. These early gaming pioneers were working with limited resources and technology, but that didn't stop them from thinking outside the box and trying some truly unusual methods to create immersive and engaging experiences for players. So today, let's take a look at some of the weirdest, most creative, and strangest animation techniques from the past and see how these experiments paved the way for some of the most iconic modern games that we play today. Welcome to the next episode of Stylized Station. Mortal Kombat, a franchise that has captured the hearts of gamers for decades and has always been known for its striking and often brutal animations. But even in its early days, the developers behind this iconic series were pushing the boundaries of animation technology. Released in 1992, Mortal Kombat was a fighting game that quickly gained notoriety for its unique visuals and controversial gory content. But it's not the gore of Mortal Kombat that makes these animations so interesting. At first glance, the animations you see on screen in Mortal Kombat may seem ordinary for a fighting game. Still, there's an innovative technique behind these unique visuals. If you look closely enough, you just might see it. That's right, those aren't hand-painted sprites, but actual, real-life actors transformed into digital form. But how does this work? To create Mortal Kombat's digitized sprites, developers filmed actors performing moves and stances in character costumes. They then selected individual frames from the footage, digitized them using chroma keying, and colored and shaded the resulting pixelated images. The digitized sprites were arranged into smooth animation sequences and optimized for performance on the hardware of the time, resulting in smooth and reasonably realistic animations. While it may look a little janky to us now, the realism of Mortal Kombat's digitized sprites was extremely successful back in the day because it starkly contrasted the visual styles of other games in the early 1990s. Most games during this period relied on hand-drawn or pixel art sprites, which, while charming and very visually appealing, often lacked the level of detail and realism that digitized sprites could achieve. Around the time Mortal Kombat was released, other popular fighting games like Street Fighter II and Fatal Fury dominated the genre. These games featured beautifully crafted, hand-drawn sprites, but didn't look as lifelike as Mortal Kombat's digitized sprites. When players saw Mortal Kombat's realistic characters who moved and fought with the fluidity and nuance of actual humans, it was like a roundhouse kick to the face of convention, changing the game forever. In response to Mortal Kombat's groundbreaking visuals, Developers of other fighting games, like the aforementioned Street Fighter II and Fatal Fury, recognized the need to innovate to remain competitive. The push for more realistic character movements and improved graphical fidelity eventually led to the adoption of advanced animation techniques and technological advancements in subsequent games. But it gets even weirder than that. The influence of digitized sprites in Mortal Kombat really was just the tip of the iceberg. The gaming industry was brimming with creative developers eager to experiment with other unique techniques to produce captivating animations. Rotoscoping, a technique that involves capturing live action footage of human movement and tracing over the frames to produce smooth, authentic animation 
has been used in various forms of media. A famous example is the 1978 animated adaption of The Lord of the Rings by Ralph Bakshi, where rotoscoping was extensively used to create the film's unique visuals. Another noteworthy instance is the distinctive visual style of a scanner darkly, achieved using a digital rotoscoping technique. Because rotoscoping is based on real-life footage, it can create often a more natural and fluid movement in the characters, which is why it's been used in many movies and shows over the years. However, because the animation is traced over real-life footage, Your mother's a tracer! it can sometimes look strange or uncanny. Sometimes the characters may seem to move in an almost too realistic way, making them look like they're not quite part of the animated world that they're in, creating a very distinct and sometimes, in my opinion, unsettling animation style. But it's more than just traditional media where we can find really creative uses of rotoscoping. This innovative animation has also made its mark in video games. One of the earliest and most notable examples can be found in the 1989 Prince of Persia game, created by Jordan Mechner. This action-adventure platformer captivated players with this incredibly fluid character animations and engaging gameplay, which really was ahead of its time. But how did they achieve such fluid animations? In the case of Prince of Persia, Mechner recorded his younger brother performing various acrobatic moves such as running, jumping, and climbing, and used this footage as a reference for the in-game animations. Mechner shot the footage in their parents' backyard using a VHS camcorder, which was cutting-edge technology at the time. To create the rotoscoped animations, Mechner projected the recorded footage frame by frame onto a wall and then traced the outlines of his brother's movements on paper. He then scanned these hand-drawn images into the computer, refined and edited them to fit the game's art style and technical constraints. Very, very impressive. This labor-intensive process allowed Mechner to capture the nuances and momentum of real-life movement, setting Prince of Persia apart from other games of the era. This approach to animation significantly impacted the naturalness and authenticity of the character's movements. The game's protagonist moved with an elegance and fluidity that was extremely rare in other games from that period which often depended on more rudimentary and less sophisticated animation techniques. This attention to detail and focus on genuine motion made the game feel more engaging and contributed to its status as a pioneering title in video games. Influences of rotoscoping in video game animation can still be seen today, even though it's largely been supplanted by more advanced methods such as motion capture. Prince of Persia's innovative use of rotoscoping demonstrated the potential for video game animation to evoke a sense of authenticity and engagement, inspiring the development of subsequent titles and pushing the limits of what was achievable in the medium. As evidence of its enduring allure and impact, the Prince of Persia series has spawned numerous sequels and adaptations, continuing to enthrall gamers with its compelling gameplay and iconic animation. But it gets even weirder than that. Facial animation in modern games has come a long way, with advancements in motion capture and facial recognition technology allowing for incredibly realistic and nuanced performances. But we didn't always have it this good. And back in the day, developers tried many creative techniques to capture the elusive art of realism with mixed results. Your heart is right. I don't think there is any better example than Titanic Adventure Out of Time. Released in 1996, an innovative point-and-click adventure game took players on a thrilling journey aboard the ill-fated RMS Titanic. Developed by Cyberflix and published by GTE Entertainment, the game was known for its rich storytelling, historical accuracy, and notably, its unique facial animation techniques. At first glance, the peculiar animatronic-like facial animations can be quite unsettling, with their uncanny valley appearance and unusual movements. However, beneath this eerie exterior lies a groundbreaking and inventive approach to creating realistic facial animation. So get a load of this. To try and create realistic looking characters, developers utilize photographs of actors from a local theater group, animating them with eye expressions and mouth movements. Rather than creating images for all of the facial expressions, they separately animated different parts of the face and body. Animators had a selection of pre-made eyes, mouths, and head positions, allowing them a lot of creative freedom when creating the final animation. Different actors were responsible for physical acting, voicing, and animating, resulting in the final performance. The uncanny valley animation style and awkward delivery, in my opinion, made these characters really, really memorable, and it's still a very creative solution. These one-of-a-kind solutions, characteristic of the 90s, has aged relatively well for a game that's now 
quarter of a century year old, Titanic Adventure Out of Time had a lasting influence on the adventure game genre and animation techniques in the gaming industry. Its innovative use of facial animation demonstrated the potential for combining live action performances with computer generated imagery paving the way for future advancements in the field. In the years that followed, game developers continued to explore and expand upon these techniques. For instance, the groundbreaking adventure game The Longest Journey utilized detailed pre-rendered backgrounds and expressive character animations. As technology advanced, developers began incorporating more sophisticated methods like motion capture to create increasingly lifelike and expressive characters, as seen in games such as L.A. Noir, which famously used advanced facial motion capture technology for its groundbreaking interrogation sequences. So let's get back to the embroidered characters in Scarlet Deer Inn. Now, here's the secret sauce. Each character animation frame starts as a physical embroidery created on a machine. I assumed you guessed that much. But the animation process begins with the drawing of characters. Once the drawings are complete, they are digitized using Hatch Embroidery 3 software, which converts the hand-drawn images into a format that an embroidery machine can understand. After digitizing the drawings, the embroidery machine stitches the characters onto fabric. Each animation frame is embroidered separately, producing physical embroidered character images. These embroidered frames are then scanned onto the computer. Once the embroidered frames have been scanned, they are then cropped to remove any access, background, or fabric. The developers then digitally add black defining lines and shadows to enhance the appearance of the characters and make them blend seamlessly into the game's digital world, resulting in charming, unique characters that give the game a very, very unique visual style. But why would they do it this way? Isn't it too hard, you might ask? Indeed, the process may seem laborious, but in my opinion, it's essential to remember that passion has always been a driving force for game developers. Many, many groundbreaking titles like Mortal Kombat, Prince of Persia, and Titanic Adventure Out of Time were created by dedicated teams or individuals who truly cared about their games and aspired to push the boundaries of technology. These creators were driven to innovate, explore new methods, and take risks to bring their visions to life. Their passion helped them overcome technical limitations and craft memorable experiences that have truly stood the test of time. I mean, I'm here talking about them today, almost a quarter century later. In the case of Scarlet Deer Inn, the developers have chosen an unconventional approach to animation, fueled by their love for the craft and a desire to create something truly unique. This dedication connects them to the pioneering spirit of past game developers and helps elevate their work, leaving a lasting impression on the gaming community. The passion and commitment of these creators remind us that sometimes it's the willingness to go the extra mile that truly sets a game apart. So yeah, vintage animation is pretty cool.